Hello classmates, judges, and Mr. Redekin. My name is Ellie Silverman. As my partner John said in his opening, we are here to tell you why affirmative action must stay. Now, I know most of you already had an opinion on affirmative action before walking into the room. Most likely it wasn't a favorable one. The words reverse discrimination and outdated must pop into your mind. They even popped into mine when we first introduced the topic. But the research I've done for this debate has convinced me otherwise, and I hope to do the same for you. As a judge, you have the responsibility to cast your vote not based on your opinion, but on the debate itself. To explain, there are some debate rules. The resolution states that the U.S. federal government should eliminate affirmative action in college admissions. In order for the affirmative to win this debate, they must show a need for change <coughs> and a practical and desirable plan. If they fail to meet, to meet either one of these criteria, they cannot win. As a negative, if we point out inherency to fix the problem, prove there's no need for change, or point out one flaw in their plan, then we win. The affirmative has the burden of proof, so if you have the slightest doubt, you must vote negative. Our definition of affirmative action is very similar to theirs. It's from Merriam-Webster Dictionary.com. But they left out the second part of the definition. So affirmative action means an active effort to improve the employment or educational opportunities of members of minority groups and women. Also a similar effort to promote the rights of progress of other disadvantaged groups. So the affirmative kept saying they have the right to limit the topic, which they do. But instead of limiting the topic, they've changed the resolution completely. Now the resolution is that resolve the U.S. federal government should eliminate gender as a factor in college admissions. But we have the word affirmative action. You can't cut out the definition. You can limit a broad topic, but the definition, and I repeat, says an effort to improve the employment or educational opportunities of members of minority groups and women, and a similar effort to promote the rights of progress of other disadvantaged groups. That's a definition. Also, as the affirmative, they have to argue to completely eliminate affirmative action, not reform. Just removing gender reforms affirmative action because it gets rid of one part of it, but it's not eliminating the policy as a whole. So they cannot twist the resolution around like they are trying to do. As the negative, we believe that affirmative action needs to be mended. That's why our keystone philosophy is mended, don't end it. As times evolve, we recognize that policies like affirmative action, which was created during the Civil Rights Movement, must evolve with the times. So now, I will talk about race, because this is a part of affirmative action. Nationally, about 50% of all blacks and Latino students attend schools, and where 75% or more of the students are low income, as measured by eligibility for free and reduced price lunch. According to the Center for Civil Rights at the University of North Carolina, only 5% of white students attend such high poverty schools. For these reasons, we believe that there is a strong need for affirmative action and that minority status must be taken into account in admissions, but that the socioeconomic factor of the application must be regarded just as much. Therefore, we have a counter plan that if an applicant is of a minority race but from an upper class, that, they were, that the two cancel each other out. However, if an applicant is of a majority race, but from a family below the poverty line, then extra consideration must be taken. Therefore, that's not reverse discrimination. According to the court case, Grutter v. Bollinger, race-conscious preferences that make race the determining factor are unconstitutional. The affirmative must ask, might ask, like, how do, you, how do you enforce that? Because they're saying that any policy with affirmative action is just one part of the application process. So we say that we need stricter judicial review. It's already in place, they just need to enforce it, which shows that there's inherency to fix the problems in affirmative action. By implementing stricter judicial review of each college's use of affirmative action and admissions, this controversial topic can be solved. So I would like to point out, if I can unfreeze this, that the affirmative was talking about race, I mean uh, gender, and I was at the University of Maryland yesterday, so I thought I would pull this up on College Board. It was the first one I searched. 47% women, 51% men. This is pretty equal. I'm not going to say that a women are at a much less disadvantage than men, because 47 and 53. But I've applied to a lot of colleges, and almost every college is this close. Almost 50-50, because colleges want to have an equal representation of women and men. No college is going to try to attract kids by saying, hey, it's 80% women and 20% men. Personally, I would not want to go to a school that was all girls. If I did, then I'd go to an all-girls school. 
So this is not a problem with affirmative action. I think that, well, we believe that it's our responsibility to ensure equal opportunity. Um, for, not, for the number system, for the application that the affirmative proposes, you can still figure out what gender the person is. Though. There are interviews. You have resumes. I filled out a resume for colleges. I put a picture on it. That's no stopping someone from doing that. And for an admissions representative to take that into account. There's also essays and teacher recommendations. So you can't fully know that colleges are going to get rid of gender as a qualifying factor. Also, um, it was mentioned that California, Texas, Florida, and Michigan have already gotten rid of affirmative action. But uh, the study published by California State University by a professor of economics, Jessica Howell, found that if race-neutral college admissions were to be implemented nationwide in college admissions and to completely get rid of affirmative action in its entirety, 